Good morning guys, uh, we're gonna do a paint your nails with me video. On Instagram I asked you guys to ask me questions and quite a few of you did, so thank you so much for participating, I really appreciate it. In today's video, I'm gonna paint my nails with uh, this little guy right here. Actually, let me start off with what I removed my previous polish with, which is the Zoya Remove. I ended up buying this little guy and already I'm running low. Oh my gosh. I don't want it to finish. Last night, I did put on Vaseline on my nails. I don't know why my nails look shiny right now because I didn't put anything on. But I put a bunch of Vaseline and rubbed it on my nails as well as into my cuticle. And I love how my cuticles look in the morning. My nails are a little bit stained from my previous polish. And because I have splitting going on, some of the polish seeped in in between the layers, which is very annoying. But the polish that I'm gonna be using today is from 90 Lacquer. This one's called Robin's Egg, which is a turquoise with multi-chrome flakes and multi-chrome micro shimmers in here. Really pretty, somebody asked to see this polish, so I thought I would put it on in this video. The base that I'm gonna use is my Nail Teaks Formula 2. I've been using this consistently maybe once, twice a week or something like that. I tend not to use it too often because I'm using it for maintenance right now. The top coat that I'll be using is my Out The Door Top Coat from INM, which I love. It's my favorite. Julie G. Quebec, by the way, I'll leave, if their uh, accounts are, are public, I will leave their handles down below for you to check them out. Julie does uh, nail polish swatches on her Instagram on the manis that she wears. It's really nice and I've been following her for a while now. So Julie asked me if you could live in another country, what would it be? I've never really thought about living in another country. I've always thought about living in another state within the US, but it's always been somewhere cold, <laughs> somewhere that Cali is not because although it gets cold here, it's not nearly as cold enough for me at least because mind you, I've lived in California all of my life. Cold here is probably not what cold is for a lot of other people. I've never really thought about living anywhere else other than my country, which is Nicaragua. Funny enough, it's hot and humid there. It's tropical weather, but I love it so much. I have so many great memories. So if I was to go back somewhere, it would be there because I love it. There or Mexico, I think, because my husband is from Mexico and Mexico is really beautiful. I've never actually been there myself. We have family there, but I've never been there to visit or vacation. Oh, and for her, it would be Hawaii. Hawaii is really beautiful, actually. When I was a kid, I wanted to live there. I also wanted to live in Italy as well because it's beautiful. The next question is from Lipstick Gal one Favorite book and favorite food? I'm embarrassed to say I haven't read or finished a book in a really long time. Right now, I'm reading the book It and I'm also reading Compendium 1 from The Walking Dead. I bought the big old, big old book. One of the last books that I read and I adored was Angela's Ashes from Frank McCourt. I gotta tell you, I think I cried every time I flipped a page. It was so, such a great, such a great book. That one and The Road are really awesome. And The Road, I know they did a motion picture of it, but the book is so much better as it always is. Favorite food, I love, my favorite dish is a Nicaragüense dish, which is uh, arroz relleno, it's a Nicaragüense dish. And it has a ton of vegetables, it has chicken, it has ham. But if I was to eat one type of food for the rest of my life, it would either be Italian or Mediterranean food. Both are amazing and delicious. I would go with Mediterranean more because it's healthier and still delicious to where Italian, not so good for my stomach, but it's, it's, it's so worth it. If you hear my kids in the background, it's because they're in my room playing while I record this video. Look at that. It has a little fringed, that's really weird. I don't know how that happened. Right, the next question is from E. Fraser. Funny enough, E. Fraser, Miss Fraser here. We have been friends since high school. Is that crazy or what? We don't keep in touch as much, but we have really great memories from high school. 
which is so cool. Let me get this to a point where you guys can see it. So she asked me if you could start your own nail polish company, what would you name it and why? I've never really thought about starting my own nail polish company. I've always wanted to own a company though. And it was always some kind of food related <laughs> company or beauty related company as far as makeup and stuff. But I've always wanted to own like a cafe or a restaurant or something. And every time I've thought, of the name being Eden. I've always wanted to name my business Eden. And that is one of my kids' names. I love that name so much. Not only does it represent the Garden of Eden, but it also means delight, which means joy, happiness, and... Of course, they're gonna bark right now. But funny enough, I do have products to make my own nail polish, I bought them a while ago. I've just never played with it. I have the base, I have glitters and all of that stuff because I wanted to make my own polish just to play around, not for, not as anything serious. The next question from her is, what would you make your company stand out over the ones you already, that already exist? I think that's pretty tough because when you think about nail polish companies, I think Indies changed the game and made it super personalized, which is something that I would do. So I don't know if there's anything that I would, you know, I would do different from them. They're doing such an awesome job already. But personalized notes, I think, are really great. I don't know if a lot of the, not a lot of them, I think more of the smaller indie companies do. Uh, personalized notes when they ship you their products. God, that little hair is going to annoy the crap out of me. I hope I don't get it everywhere. And this polish is applying really weird. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that? Do you see how it's applying? It's applying really strange. So I don't know how I would really stand out. I've never really thought about it, but when I was thinking about, you know, my business as far as the cafe, I always thought about keeping it personal, very family oriented. When I thought of a cafe, I always thought of if people come to my cafe, I wanted them to feel like they were sitting in their living room, hanging out on a couch or something. That's the vibes that I wanted them to have. The next question is from Jessica S. Yo. No, Jessica Sio, I think. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Which is harder for you, panning makeup or pan or project? polish panning makeup hands down i love makeup i apply i love applying it on myself but it's a little bit difficult to pan makeup because the purpose is to go through the products but i don't apply a ton of it and i don't wear makeup every day and for that reason it makes it a little bit challenging to wear polishes i can paint my nails every day when i have the time i love painting my nails regularly so for me it's not challenging to go through a polish because the more you paint your nails the the faster you'll go through through the polishes next question did you get well, how did you get addicted to nail polish this was ages ago my addiction started gosh i was in my early 20s, I want to say. I was never that girly girl. I never really painted my nails, and if I did paint my nails, it was a very translucent nude or like a Linkin Park After Dark type of polish or black polish. Always, never failed. My older sister has always been the girly girl in the family with the dresses and the skirts. To this day, she still is, by the way. Oh gosh, that little flake is just wanting to come off. She was pregnant, so she couldn't paint her toes. She couldn't do her pedicure. I did her pedicure once and saw her nail polish stash, and to me at that time, that was a ton of polish. She had a bag with her base and top coat, and it was this big. I think she had about 10 to 12 polishes or something like that. And to me, that was an insane amount of polishes. But I loved how her nails looked all the time. They looked so pretty. And I wanted to start painting my nails consistently. And that's when I started. That's when I started collecting polishes. And when I started buying polishes, I bought the most inexpensive ones from the drugstore. That's how I started. And I think I was only buying Wet n Wild and Sally Hansen at the time. I didn't even venture into simple colors. Slowly but surely, I think one of the major brands that I bought from at that time was, and I, I decided to invest my money in because I think polishes are an investment. You know, you pay $10 a bottle. And to me, that was an insane amount of 
of money, but the first brand that I decided to invest my money into was OPI. I, I think that was my first love, my first major purchase for me. It was a big deal. I was so excited about my first bottle, and I think it was Linkin Park After Dark. No, it wasn't that one. It was some kind of fuchsia looking one. I can't remember the name, Flashbulb Fuchsia, something like that. It's pretty old, but that's how it started. And then YouTube came along, and I didn't start watching YouTube till 2000. 13 maybe before that no 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 before that 2012 something like that and it became it, it enabled me basically to buy more polishes i wanted every color from every brand and uh which is why i love top 10 videos top 10 videos are super helpful because it it condenses a lot of the polish per brand and so you can start venturing little by little because every brand has a ton of polishes and it can get pretty overwhelming all right so that's the first coat not bad it's not fully opaque this nail kind of missed a lot of it here on the side but i'm hoping that the second layer will be better i have a lot of my eczema going on right now you can see that there and there and right here i had peeling but it's healed now from evelyn evelyn loves polish with by the way can we get her back over here on youtube i know she's been a little mia life happens you know but we miss you evelyn if you could only keep a nail polish from one brand, which one would you pick and why? That is so difficult. My heart wants to say OPI because again, I am a t tied to them because they were one of the first major brands. It's anywhere between OPI, Orly, and China Glaze. I love them so much. I want to say OPI because I think I have the most from them and I have a, a pretty decent variety. Oh god, that's so difficult. And I have some from them that I just adore and I I can't see myself not wearing again. So I want to say OPI. Let's leave it at that. I may regret it later. The next question is what would you what would be your best me in a bottle color? And for me, I'm pretty simplistic, but I don't know. I want to say this one. Don't let the dead bite from China Glaze. This has a very beautiful nude, pink nude base, but there's an interest to it. So the base of it is kind of bland, you know, whatever, because it's a nude, but yet there's a little bit of sparkle in it and there's something a little morbid about this polish. I hate to describe myself like that. But yeah, I'm plain Jane, but there's a little interest and there's a little bit of darkness in me. I think there's a little bit of darkness in everybody, so I would have to say this one. I was looking on my shelf or my racks, and when I saw this one, I said, yep, that's the one. Pretty, I don't know if it's pretty boring. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but I think it's awesome. And it's called Don't Let the Dead Bite, which is, you know, a huge, huge fan of zombies. So there you go. Where would you like to... Where would you like to travel? Italy, Paris, within the US, definitely New York, somewhere cold. Uh, Nicaragua, I would love to go back and visit. Where do you see yourself in five years? I don't know, happy still. Hopefully enjoying the years of my daughters and seeing how they change into young women. That's exciting for me. I get to share those moments with them or they allow me to share them with them, you know, which is great. Career-wise, hopefully, uh, I'm a makeup artist, so I would love to be doing films. Independent films would be, would be great, actually. I've always wanted to do independent films and just get to a place where I'm pretty settled. Am I in focus? But what is a nail polish trend you are tired of seeing and what is one trend you'd like to make a comeback? I really like the negative space, the nail art. It was really pretty. Also the glitter gradient on the nails where you would start off from the tip and move upward and it would gradiate. I thought that looked really pretty. The, the negative space I think looks super cool. So I would love to see those trends come back. Trends that I would love to see go are too many for me. There's just a lot. <laughs> Especially in the acrylic nail polish world. My God, those 3D nails are just horrid. I hate them so much. I look at them and I get the heebie-jeebies. It's just so ugly to me. I don't like them at all. I would also like to see those magnetic polishes go away. 
those are recent and I don't I don't I don't know I don't I don't get the hype from it I don't understand it I just whatever also chrome I'm not really into chromes but I don't think that's a trend that's in right now anyway so it doesn't doesn't really matter so this this got opaque at two coats it's, it's pretty thick I have to say I don't know if it's because it's from last year's collection. I'm not really sure. So next question is from Danny, Daniela Saratevo. Daniela Saratevo. So Danny, Danny Bo here on YouTube. I love her. She's so beautiful, super intelligent, and she's just, I don't know. I would love to chill out. I would love to chill out with all, with all of you guys and just have a, a cup of coffee, actually. I'm a cup of coffee cup of tea kind of girl let's sit on the couch and chill out kind of a kind of a girl first question from her is if you had to get really extra acrylic nails how would you design them I just mentioned those 3d nails right I used to get acrylics a long time ago and I was a religious acrylic nail polish nail wear and the acrylics that I used to get I love the coffin nails adored them or like the little almond shape nails. I thought they were really pretty, but I was always really simple. Basic colors, nudes, um, stuff like that. Nothing too, too crazy. Uh, I think sometimes I did glitter on them, like the glitter acrylic powder or whatever. I think that would be as extra as I would get because I don't like the, like, the overly, mm, the very loud, nails I'm a behind-the-scenes kind of girl I do not like standing out in crowds at all uh, funny enough because I love wearing dark lips and I love nail polish lipstick and nail polishes are my favorite things because I'm so simplistic with my clothing and just my whole my whole self in general that I feel like polishes and and, and lipsticks are a statement piece for me they've been for a very very long time because I'm so simple so I don't do extra anything. It's just not my thing. It's just, I feel very uncomfortable about it. Another question from Danny: How do you feel your Latinidad influences your YouTube? I would like to think or hope that it encourages other Latinas out there to make YouTube videos. And especially in the nail polish world, there's a lot in the, the makeup world already. I think there's an abundance of Latinas out there. But I started my YouTube channel because I, back then, there was not a lot of girls that were my skin tone, number one, or especially not my age. A lot of the girls were 15 years younger than me. And as you know, nail uh, makeup on a 20 year old compared to a makeup to someone who is in their 30s and nearing 40 looks very very different more than anything not only my skin tone but also my age i would like to if anything help you out um how would products look on you nail polishes as well that's one thing that i wish a lot of the brands would venture out more into you know how there is this whole inclusive thing going on with with foundations i would love a lot of the brands to do the same for nail polish a lot of the nail polish swatches that i see are someone that is not my skin tone they are 20 shades lighter than myself and so it's very hard for me to to see how a polish is going to look like. So I would love companies to be inclusive because they need to get on it as well. There are a few companies that do it. I recently purchased from KB Shimmer. They had swatches on somebody that was somebody, two people, two different people that were darker, that were deep skin, but different undertones. I love that so much. And other companies need to get on that for sure because we're not all 20 shades of light or whatever 50 shades of white it's just not that's just not what it is you know some of us are deeper and even deeper than myself so that's one thing that i would love to see especially in the nail polish world or what is your experience as a latina on youtube i really haven't had too much ex i mean experience it's been great i mean people have been welcoming to me and it's all been so positive, I think. I do, though, I mentioned it on my Instagram a really long time ago. I feel like someone who is my skin tone doesn't get as much support from other people that are of similar skin tone. Funny enough, I did mention it on my Instagram. You know, we're, um, we're watching people, which is fine. You know, you can watch whoever you want. 
and you're watching someone that is 20 shades lighter than you put on a blush and we go on and purchase that blush and look and it looks completely different on us and we wonder why but why would you not support someone that is of similar skin tone I find that to be a reality here on YouTube and when I went into my own subscription box I was subscribed to a lot of people that were a lot lighter than myself doing makeup which is fine you know but why why am I subscribed to somebody that's my skin tone maybe three people and 20 people that are very fair that's that just I don't know that's a, that was a red flag for me and I immediately started to change that if I see someone that is my skin tone and I enjoy their channel because I have to enjoy them of course I don't just subscribe just just because they're my skin tone um, then I will I will support them we need more support not just in the Latina community but just I don't know and just in the community in general so I think that's the last question, guys. I, I do appreciate all of you who participated. I'm so thankful that there was questions. I was a little bit nervous that there wasn't going to be any questions because some people are just not interested, you know, which is completely fine. And I've never done a Q&A. So I appreciate you, all of you that um, asked me the questions. I'm just applying the last layer here, which is the top coat. I don't even think I let that that last layer dry fully but it's okay and it looks really pretty I like how all the little flakes show through this base although it is on the thicker side it doesn't completely cover up all the flakies I think from afar though you can't really see them too much you see the little specks and it looks so pretty I love this do you see that? How gorgeous is that? That's really beautiful. Well done, Jess. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful polish, and I've enjoyed applying it. A little bit tricky, though. Just try to maybe move quickly on the first application, and then the second application. It's so much easier, I feel. All right, guys, that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. I forgot to share with you guys what I was drinking, but I'm still drinking coffee because it's still morning. I am going to be working on some swatches. I know some of you guys have asked me to do swatches of different colors. I have not forgotten that. I just haven't had the time. But please don't think that I am ignoring anything. When you guys leave comments, I take them very seriously. And I do plan on doing that. Just give me a little bit of time. If you have any questions, uh, you can leave them down in the comment section below. And I can answer them in the next Paint Your Nails with me. I think that would be awesome. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.